VFX Blender here today, and we're going to learn how to fly. So uh, let's get started. Go! Whoa. I was the cameraman recording this video while my friend was the one jumping in this video, so big thanks to him for being a character in this tutorial. So this is what you're going to learn in this Blender tutorial, and you do need a tripod in order to pull off this effect. Uh, the node setup is kind of intimidating, but if you do what I do step by step, you'll be fine. Alrighty, so let's begin. So go to your movie clip editor and click on open and select your footage. Runs in that file and select your footage and uh, click on open clip. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of skim through the video just to make sure it works properly. So, um, so it looks like it's working properly. And um, now what we need to find is the end point um, whenever he stops jumping. So that's at 100 frames. And uh, now we need to f uh, figure out like right before he comes onto the scene. Um, and I think that's going to be um, like frame 20. Yeah, I think frame 20 is going to work. So um, then click on that, um, type in frame 20. All right. Now, um, let's see if that works. Yep, that looks good. Now, masking. Click on masking and hit new. And we're going to name this um, um, fly guy. Um, just some way to label it, uh, so we'll know what that is later. Okay, now we need to begin masking, and um, frame 71, you need to pick right when he starts lifting off the ground, and that's frame 71 for me. And so to start masking, we need to hit Control c and uh, left-click on our mouse, and it's going to hit a little pin. If we do the Control c left-click, it's going to do it again and again, and it's going to connect these dots, and um, then... Um, once we uh, put a couple out there, if you uh, right click on the second dot, you can kind of control the, um, like, and if you right click on the other dot, you can kind of readjust it again, but if you right click on that thing, it kind of like moves it around, makes it smaller, rotates it, and uh, yeah, that's how you kind of control the masking tool. Um, Anyway, and you just kind of get it to where it looks nice. It, it takes me a little while sometimes to kind of get it to a uh, appropriate look. And, um, yeah, and we're just going to go over the whole body. And uh, try not to put too many masking marks. Too many uh, gets kind of complicated. There's only six frames in this video of masking, and I'm only going to show you how to do two because once you see how to do two frames of masking, you'll get the picture of how to do the rest. And uh, to lighten the mood of the repetitious process, I'm going to have some background music that I composed with my guitar, so I hope you like it.
anyway, back to Blender. Um, if I didn't mention this earlier, but the middle mouse button, if you click it and hold it, it will allow you to kind of drag around the video and get to different areas. And the scroll up and scroll down is zoom in and zoom out. So if you hit Alt-C, it's going to connect the two masking marks. And now we just need to kind of tweak the masking marks a little bit more. And uh, just kind of make it look a little bit better. Do some final touches. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's looking good. Um, now uh, double tap A on your keyboard. And that's going to allow you to select the whole thing. So we are on uh, frame 71. And we're going to hit insert frame. Or you can um, insert key, I mean, or you can hit I. And now we're going to uh, go to frame uh, 72. And we need to hit G to kind of move it to where it fits over the person. Now the background music will begin again. Since we went through how to do the first two frames, I'm going to pause the video and do the other three frames. And uh, anyway, here's a quick tip that I figured out. If you uh, hit B, you're going to box select um, the things that you want, and then you can just hit G and move it over to your desired place that you want. It's really cool. Okay, so we're ready to uh, look at our mask that we made for six frames. And it looks pretty good. As you can see, the mask follows the character. Now bring up the resolution to 100% and bring the frame rate to 30 frames per second or whatever type of frame rate that uh, you recorded your camera with. Now we're ready to go to the node editor and uh, go to rendered layers and click use nodes. Now we need to delete this. So uh, just delete it and hit shift A, go to input and go to movie clip and open and we're going to um, open the same file that we opened up in the movie clip editor. Now hit shift A again and we're gonna go to output and we're going to have a viewer so we can kind of see what's happening. Now go to uh, input, click on mask and select fly guy. <coughs> and uh, now go to converter and click set alpha, bring the image to image and bring the uh, mask to alpha. 
and bring the image to the image on the viewer and hit backdrop. And as you can see, uh, the mask is working, um, but it's working uh, in the wrong way, so we need to reverse it. So click on the movie clip editor and click on this button right here. And uh, now go back to the node editor, and it's going to uh, fill it in the inside of the mask. So, as you can see, it follows the character. But there's something that's gonna, that you're going to run into. Once you go to frame 70, the character isn't going to be in the mask. So, we either have to mask the person every single frame of this video, which would be tremendously hard, or we can just uh, kind of disable the mask for that frame, up until that frame. So, um, so hit I on frame 71 on that button and then go to frame 70 and uh, select the uh, mask and bring it all the way up and insert key frame and it's gonna move down frame 70 and now click on that and then hit I and uh, now what that's gonna do is it's going to allow it where on frame 71 the mask is going to be on there and filled in and on frame 70 it's going to be out of the frame and it's going to uh, show everything outside of the mask okay so uh, now we're ready to add a um, image which is going to be the background so click open and click background 3 which is the same background as the the movie scene and let's just kind of look at it. yep that's the same scene so now we need to kind of combine this together so go to color and go to alpha over and bring the image down to the bottom image and bring the uh, we'll bring that image to the viewer and then we can kind of see what's going on and then we're gonna bring the background on the top okay looks pretty good but we have a problem here whenever we bring it to frame um, 70 um, the background disappears, of course, but it's a different color. So, um, in order to make the background the same color as the video, we need to hit Convert Primo, and it's going to make it the same color as the video. And uh, so, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, now, um, do, uh, you must need, you do need a, a composite node in order to render it. So, go to Output, go to Composite, and uh, now uh, hit render image and we'll just kinda see if the background and the mask is working properly okay well the mask is working great and the background is uh, working properly also so everything is good so go to the node editor and we're gonna move everything kinda out of the way because we got some more uh, nodes to add so uh, hit shift a, and we need to add um, go to filter go to blur and what this is essentially going to do is add some motion blur so right when he starts jumping it's going to add some blur effect like in real life alright so go to frame um, on frame 70 the y-axis needs to be at 0 so hit I to add a keyframe there and then at frame 71 bring that all the way up to um, frame uh, to Y all the way to 20 and then hit I on the Y and that's going to make it worth 70 there's no um, there's no blur on, on frame 71 there is blur okay looking good okay now um, the thing we need to do is add another um, node but we need to make some room real quick and this next node is going to be uh, the transform node. Okay, so now we need to add a transform node. So hit Shift A and go to Distort and click on Transform. And so essentially what we've got to do is make the character go straight up like he's flying. So go to the Y axis and kind of like scroll that to the right. And uh, as you can see, whenever we do that, the character will move even farther up. So if we bring that to, let's say, like 100, he's going to go, like, really high up. Um, so, yeah. So, now we're ready to add a keyframe to frame 71. 
So uh, go to the y-axis and hit I. And now we're going to go all the way to frame 75. And from frame 71 to 75, I want the y-axis to go all the way up to 850. And uh, hit Enter and then hit I to add a keyframe on uh, frame 75. And uh, now we're going to render it out and uh, see how it looks because we don't want his foot to be in the footage we want to go um, far enough um, he, I want him to fly high enough to where his foot doesn't stay in the shot so it has to go far um, on, on the y-axis so um, now let's just kinda look over our work kinda make sure it all looks good to me it looks good so yeah looks looks fine it's ready to go um, and let's just go ahead and go to frame 80 just to make sure something didn't go weird and wrong. Um, and it still looks good. All right. Well, um, good deal. Um, now uh, go to um, where you're going to save the video to. And I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going, instead of making it an image sequence, I'm going to make it H.264 video format. And I'm going to turn this to an MPEG-4. And we don't really need audio. And now we're ready to render the animation. Pretty exciting. So I'm going to, like, pause the video. And uh, I will uh, show you the finished results of this render output. Okay, we're at frame 100, and uh looks pretty good so far. I looked at it, and uh, it's nice. All right, and uh, now I'm going to show you the results.